Bring in my colleague Sidhan Sudbil, who is at this moment in the Rashtrapati Bhavan. He's joining us live from the place where the swearing-in ceremony is, of course, taking place. Sidhan, this is, of course, a big moment. This is Modi 3.0, the swearing-in ceremony for which is about to take place. Give us a sense of the dignitaries who, of course, made their way, the international guests who are part of this swearing-in ceremony. So, Norma, I am inside bank in the center of the forecourt of the Rashpati Bhavan. Uh, the, the excitement around me is something that um, I can't describe in words, but a sea of humanity present around me. Um, there is a little bit of internet connectivity issues, but essentially the excitement around me is quite a lot. Uh, and essentially we have seen uh, who's who of uh, uh, India's uh, political system and also from the Bollywood have arrived here. The leaders who have been invited, uh, the seven leaders are also present. Uh, but essentially, this grand ceremony will be witnessed by millions we know. But inside the Rashtrapati Bhavan, where I am present, the atmosphere is electrifying. Uh, the entire Rashtrapati Bhavan is now being lit up as uh, it's, as the day sets. And essentially, we know that uh, the ministers who will be taking oath are sitting on the dais, which includes uh, Dr. S. J. Shankar, who was uh, the external affairs minister previously. And uh, we know that uh, there are other uh, top uh, leaders, uh, including Amit Shah, Rajnath Singh, and there's uh, a lot of slogans being also chanted uh, uh, for the for Narendra Modi now. This is his third term. So a lot of uh, BJP karyakartas are also present who, of course, uh, are raising the uh, slogan. Absolutely. Absolutely indeed, Siddhant. This, this, of course, is a big moment. The atmosphere is there, is really electric. An estimated 8,000 guests have, of course, made their way for this big swearing-in ceremony. We'll have more clarity on who would be the cabinet ministers who will be sworn in. Because at this moment, it's all in the realm of speculation of who could be included and who could be left out. And what is it that Narendra Modi will, of course, have to do to keep his coalition partners happy? And that's something that will be talked about in the days to come. And Ms. Adi Fatnis, if, if I can bring you in on this, you know, a lot of talk has been about uh, the power equation within the Bharatiya Janata Party and the Telugu Desam Party and the JDU. Because what is being talked about is will the BJP want to cede the four or five crucial portfolios? That of home, finance, foreign ministry, law, will these have to be given to any of uh, its coalition partners? What is your assessment about how the power equation has changed within the BJP and also with the allies? So the most important ministries which are considered part of the core functioning of the government are home, external affairs, defense, finance. Uh, I don't think any of these ministries are going to be given to the alliance partners and these will be kept by the BJP by dint of the fact that BJP has the prime minister and has 240 MPs. Uh, or among all the other ministries, there is a, uh, there is a, uh, there is room for negotiation. Uh, and as well as uh, there is the speaker's position, which the TDP had occupied uh, many years ago when it was part of a similar coalition agreement. Mm -hmm. So uh, the speaker has not been named yet. He will be elected uh, by the Lok Sabha uh, and I'm sure the the, the United uh, NDA will put up uh, somebody probably maybe from the TDP. Right. Uh, handling the handling the house is very very important, uh, and uh, being from the NDA rather than the BJP, it gives a sense of uh, uh, even more uh, significance. Uh, other than that, all the ministries are uh, negotiable. I think uh, uh, we still don't know how many ministers will be sworn in. Right. The, according to the Indian laws, they are entitled to have eighty ministers. Uh, I, I'm not sure if the full complement of 80 or whether it's going to be 80 at all is going to be sworn in. Mm -hmm. But uh, certainly uh, uh, at least uh, 15 or 20 ministers are expected to be sworn in. Some people are saying it could be as many as 30. Uh, one, one issue that I think a lot of people are, of course, talking about is who will be the speaker who will be chosen. Do you think the Bharatiya Janata Party, considering that it is the single largest party in the coalition, would be willing to cede the position of the speaker to the TDP? 
Uh, it's hard to say, but I think TDP will might lay claim to it. Uh, the speaker is a very important person. Uh, he liaises with all the parties, and he's a kind of a pivotal person. Uh, the, I think the TDP feels that it has a certain uh, uh, claim uh, on that position. And uh, it's possible that, uh, you know, to strengthen the idea of the NDA, uh, a non-BJP person could be made the speaker. It's, it, that's entirely possible. All right. That, that's something that is going to be watched very closely because in a coalition government, the yes. role of the speaker is, of course, a very important one very, within, very within important. how the looks of, of course, works. So these are some of the live images that are being beamed straight from the Rashtrapati Bhavan as we speak. As the dusk begins to fall, the people have, of course, gathered. We expect the ceremony of swearing in to begin in roughly four minutes from now. Uh, one of the crucial states in this election, Ms. Fadnis, has been the state of Maharashtra. The Shiv Sena that has been in alliance with the, the Shiv Sena faction that's been in alliance with the BJP has managed to win seven seats. And do you think that will also be accommodated? The smaller parties, such as the Shiv Sena, uh, the Lok Jan Shakti party from Bihar, do you think these parties will also be accommodated with cabinet ministries this time around? Oh, yes, uh, they have to be because uh, at this point, the BJP uh, cannot take any risk in uh, pushing away anybody. Uh, they need all the parties that they have. Uh, uh, they need the support of all of them. So uh, I'm absolutely certain that uh, the Eknath Shinde faction of the Shiv Sena, which calls itself the real Shiv Sena, mm -hmm. um, uh, will be accommodated. Um, we are not sure if the other uh, elements, other uh, partners in Maharashtra, like the Ajit Pawar group, which uh, basically broke the, the Sharad Pawar-led uh, NCP, whether that is going to be accommodated or not, because it has, uh, out of the four seats that it contested, it has won only one. Uh, also, uh, some of the ministers from the BJP who were part of the uh, uh, of the alliance, the so-called Mahayuti, as it is called, mm -hmm. uh, have lost the election. They will have to be dropped. I suspect they will be replaced by uh, mem members of the alliance. For all the latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.